the police came and got him, took him out to the parking lot, and he actually ended up fighting with a cop in the parking lot and went to jail. It's an unfortunate and harsh reality for high school officials, an added dimension that goes beyond the calls and whistles. And if I gave you 60 bucks and I said, go stand over there, I'm going to yell at you for 30 minutes of those 60 minutes and call you things that you and your mom wouldn't want me to call you. Um, what, are you coming back next week? Fan behavior at high school games has become one of the chief factors in the departure of local high school officials from the ranks. It has reached a point where conduct of such a nature will no longer be tolerated from the top down. We've talked to game management, and every athletic director is on board with they're going to help us. There is none of that going to occur. If somebody's out of line completely, I am to stop, get the game manager, and say goodbye. No one is saying you can't cheer or make noise. Save that enthusiasm and, and, and everything else. Cheer your, your kid on, your, your child that's playing, or your school that's playing. You don't need to direct it at us with anger. Because we're here, this is a vocation, this isn't our vocation, it's an advocation. We're here to, it's, a, it's not a job, it's fun. As Haney said in a previous segment, rebuilding lines of communication between coaches and officials specifically has become a priority for PIAA officials. Take the shirt out of it, make it a human connection. That relationship is a baseline and tone setter for the rest of the game for assistant coaches, players, and fans. District 1 rules interpreter and football official Tom Kickline has seen some positive returns on that focus as well, beginning with a clinic he held before the season started. And communication with coaches, what the expectations are in both directions. And it was very well received by the coaching staff. They, they didn't know, you know how to ask questions to the officials to get the right answers. And I think bridging that gap by providing communication to the coaches on what we're looking at, what we're, our responsibilities are, how we handle them, promising that they're going to get the information to the questions they need, you know, asked in the right way. Uh, I think, you know, we're making progress in that front. District 11 is also entertaining a number of initiatives that would shine a light on conduct at games. You know, we're looking at things such as um, getting some former players, you know, you got Jahan Dodds and Saquon Barkley right in our backyard. You know, would they be willing to come be video and say, listen, you know, here, here's what, here's how we should be acting as fans. You know, we're, we're getting paid as professional athletes. The, the, the referees are getting paid. That's their salary. That's their career. That's not what it's like in high school. Then there's a more straightforward recommendation to some of the more outspoken fans. The other thing a lot of local athletic directors are doing is, is really, Taking the opportunity when a fan does make a bad decision, okay? Really encouraging that fan to listen. It sounds like you have something to offer, like you have some knowledge of the game. Consider, consider going and becoming a, a referee or an official. Everyone is trying their best out there. Kids, coaches, and officials. They're all human at the end of the day.